Hello friends, this video on bi applications of biotechnology part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So here we are going to talk about RNA I pathway. So here we will see that there are several enzymes and proteins which are involved in this process. Now what? Now this process is initiated only when a double-stranded RNA is introduced into the cell. Now here there is something new and interesting. Now till now you might be knowing that RNA that is ribonucleic acid is always a single-stranded structure whereas DNA is a double-stranded structure. Now when I say double-stranded, so DS stands for double-stranded RNA. Now what is this double stranded RNA? Now there can exist two RNAs which since they are complementary of each other they tend to bind with each other and they form double stranded RNA. Now the question is how can double stranded RNA be introduced in the cell? Now there are many different ways. They can either be introduced into the cell by injecting them from outside by purposefully injecting the DS RNA into the cell that is one way or they can be produced by the cell itself maybe even inside the cell itself double stranded RNA is being formed. Now here we will see a little later that how double stranded RNA is formed inside the cell itself. So depending on whether it is being uh, created within the cell itself or it is being supplied from outside but the thing is whenever this double stranded RNA enters into the cell only then the process of RNA interference pathway can start. Now what happens is so here you can see this is not a DNA this is a double stranded RNA. So if you see each strand is for one RNA. Now there is an enzyme called DICER and this enzyme cleaves DS RNA in middle of polynucleotide chain. So here you can see the enzyme DICER. So this DICER will act as this enzyme actually belongs to the family of RNA polymerase 3. You remember RNA polymerase 3 what does it do? It creates the entire strand of RNA by adding nucleotides to the existing chain. So that is the purpose of RNA polymerase. So this dicer also belongs to RNA polymerase 3 family. So this enzyme is double stranded RNA specific endonuclease. So if you remember what is endonuclease? So this is DS RNA that is double stranded RNA specific. So it, it will only attack a double stranded RNA and this is an endonuclease that means it is th that type of nuclease enzyme which cuts the DNA from within not externally so it is not exonuclease but endonuclease so this also acts as DNA scissors or cutting enzymes if you remember the restriction endonuclease enzymes so this is also a cutting enzyme it is just that this dicer is very specific to double stranded RNA structure. So here you can see this is the dicer and it is going to cut it from between. So what happens when the dicer cuts it? What is the result of that? Small interfering RNAs are formed that is SI RNAs that is small interfering RNAs. So here you can see this is small interfering RNA. So here you can see it is like a small piece of RNA. So these are small RNA pieces which contains around 20 to 25 nucleotides. That's all. Only 20 to 25 nucleotides. So you can imagine that its length is going to be really small. And also if you observe it, it has hanging ends on both the 3 prime end. So you can find unpaired bases on the 3 prime end. So if this is the 3 prime prime end of this strand then this is the three prime end of this strand and on both the three prime ends you can actually see unpaired bases so you see only one uh, single bases are present their corresponding or complementary pairs are not present so these are known as small interfering RNAs small because they are extremely small interfering RNA because these RNAs are actually going to interfere with the messenger RNA and they, these are the ones which, which, which are actually responsible for causing silencing of mRNA. 
So now what is going to be the next step? So we have small interfering RNA. Now this small interfering RNA can form risk. What is risk? It is a complex which is formed when this sm small interfering RNA combined with other protein structures. So it forms RNA induced silencing complex. So RNA induced silencing complex. So this is risk. So here you can see this is the structure that is small interfering RNA. This will combine with other protein structures as you can see here. So this entire complex that is formed is known as risk. Now some of the specialities of risks are that this risk that is this complex has a slicer. Slicer is capable of again cutting down a particular nucleic acid. So it has slicer and the second uh, characteristic is that it can cause unwinding of the double stranded DNA. So here you have two strands of RNA which are coiled around each other. So this complex has the ability to unwind the two strands. So it can actually separate the two strands of RNA and create two single stranded RNA structure. So these capabilities are present within the complex risk. So what will happen as a result of this single stranded SI RNA coupled to risk then binds to the complementary messenger RNA. So here if you see this is this complex risk but now risk has a slicer and it's, it can also separate the two strands of RNA. So you, here you can see these are the two strands of RNA which are separated from this double stranded RNA structure. Now one the two strands will separate from each other. So what will be left with? We will be left with just single strand of RNA which is coupled to risk that is the entire com uh, complex RNA induced silencing complex is present but instead of two strands of RNA only one strand of RNA is present and this complex will then bind to the complementary mRNA. So here the orange colored structure which you see that is the mRNA that is the target mRNA rather. So this one is the target mRNA. So this risk complex with one single strand of RNA will then bind to this target mRNA. Now what will happen when it binds to the uh, target mRNA? So now what happens? Now as soon as this entire complex binds to the this target mRNA, now the target mRNA gets cleaved. Why does it cleave? That's because of the slicer. As I said before also that in the complex risk we have a slicer and this slicer is capable of causing cleavage to an existing strand. So the same thing happens here. As soon as it binds to the mRNA, the slicer slices it, that is cleaves it. So what do we get? We get two different parts of or we get slices of mRNA. Now what happens to this cleaved mRNA? Now this cleaved mRNA is then recognized by the cell as aberrant and thus they are destroyed. So some of them are destroyed because the cell feels that they are aberrant whereas some of the mRNAs can also act as template for DNA for RNA polymerase. So this single stranded RNA can act as template for RNA polymerase and then RNA polymerase can create a complementary strand and give rise to the formation of double stranded DNA. And this double stranded DNA again can act as a substrate for the enzyme dicer and this process can continue over and again. So here by the end of this the RNA I pathway we get slices of mRNA. So some of these slices get destroyed by the cell whereas some of the slices can act as the substrate for RNA polymerase which can thus form double stranded RNA and this double stranded RNA can actually help the process to continue over and again. So from this what do we learn? We learn that this mRNA, the target mRNA which we were talking about, this target mRNA's job was to synthesize proteins. But now since the target mRNA, a part of mRNA got uh, cut, that is they got sliced and one some part got destroyed, some part gave rise to the formation of double stranded RNA. So the protein synthesis was prevented or we can say that the process of translation for that particular part of mRNA was prevented. That is why it is called RNA interference pathway because here 
the system is such that a portion of RNA will be prevented from synthesizing proteins and that is how translation is prevented or gene expression is prevented. Now a similar thing can be used now as you saw when I was talking with you about the infestation which is caused by the nematodes in certain plants so that can be controlled using RNA interference. Now how is that possible? That is possible because that particular portion, those proteins which are being uh, produced because of which the infestation occurs. So the production of those proteins can be controlled by controlling the process of translation. So that means the RNA pathway or RNA interference pathway can actually control the gene expression and this technique also helps in several infestation which are caused in plants. So the gene expression is prevented. Now what is the significance of RNA interference? So we understood that okay, how the process of RNA interference take place. Now the question is why is it so important? It prevents infestation of tobacco plants by nematodes. This is just an example. There are many other infestations caused by different other pests on different plants. So one such example is the nematode infection on tobacco plants. So the, this uh, technique of RNA interference can prevent this type of infestation by controlling the gene expression. Therapeutic agent for diseases. So it's, it can act and it can help in the treatment of several diseases. Important role in immune response to viruses like when viruses enter inside some organism so what kind of immune response will be produced so those immune responses can be controlled by rna interference pathway can function as tumor suppressors because it does it will not allow tumors to grow further so in fact it will help to suppress the tumors and how is that possible because again it will do the same thing now why the tumors are like growing over a period of time because the other cells in that area they are continuously dividing now what if we bring about a change in the genetic constitution such that some of the mRNA is not able to produce the protein which can cause the cell division or which can cause the tumor to grow. If that doesn't happen then RNA interference pathway can act as tumor suppressors. It doesn't allow the tumors to grow rather it suppresses the tumors. So these are some of the importance of RNA interference. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.